Ja. Yeah, yep, yeah, but individually or with a kid. Okay. Um, so we'll uh, we already pre-did a bunch of it just to kind of that way we're not making a big mess and taking forever. So yeah, a lot of it. Yeah, no, that's what we Yeah. Thank you. So hey everybody, I'm Jennifer and this is Logan and we're from Lumberjack Tools. Um, today we're going to be doing a little tutorial. And if you have any questions along the way, make sure that you just put a comment below. We'd be happy to answer those for you. Um, also, if you are watching, go ahead and type a comment below with your name or something so that you'll be entered into the drawing for the free CSBK1 at the end. Um, we'll do that drawing after we're done with the video. Mm -hmm. Yep, make sure to do that, and also, if for some reason you can't hear Jennifer or myself, just comment below and we'll do what we can to adjust the sound. Yep. All right. Well, so for our project that we picked out today, we're going to be out of our Easy Plan booklet, which is included with every kit purchased or individually you can buy it also. Um, we're making the twin size headboard plan. And we already started, we, we pre-drilled several mortise holes and tenons just to save some time. So hopefully we can just show you the process of cutting tenons, drilling mortise and uh, assembling and we'll answer any questions you have. All right. Uh, all right, so uh, just to kind of show you briefly in this plan booklet, we're gonna be drilling the mortise hole on log A here and then we're gonna cut the two tenons on it as well. So let's start with that. Get this <clears throat> secured in the log lock XL. So one comment that I will make as Logan's kind of setting it up is the importance of using the right drill. Um, for those of you who do have this Milwaukee HD 0500, you'll know that it really is a high powered drill. Sometimes you'll think that you have a drill that has enough power, but honestly having one with the correct specifications really does make a huge difference. Otherwise you can run into the drill stopping or the tenon cutter just spinning. And oftentimes people will think it's a blade issue, but it really has to do with the drill. So I'm just gonna check, before I drill this mortise hole, I'm gonna check my measurement to make sure we're in the right location, because if you drill the wrong mortise hole, there's a good chance you're gonna be having a campfire or bonfire, because you, you messed up your piece. So <laughs> let's double check that. So we are at the correct seven and a half inches to drill this mortise hole. And for the mortise hole, we're using a self-feed bit. Sorry. So that can be used actually in a handheld uh, drill. But that's only with the with these self-feed bits and Forstner bits. You can't you can't use one of these on our tenon cutters. There's not nearly enough power. So now we're going to center on our point. We're going to make sure that we're we're both in line with both directions. So we drill as straight as we possibly can. All 
All right, so now all the mortise holes are drilled on this log. The next thing we're going to do is cut both the tenons on this end. And in our plans, it notes that you need specifically an inch and three quarter tenon length. And so to do that, to make sure we get the correct length, in the manual, <coughs> there's a simple tenon length section in every, every one of our user manuals. And we're, we're using the simple method because it, for me, it's just easier to use a plug as you can repeat, repeat the tenon lengths a lot faster versus calculating it, making your mark, and cutting to it. So each tool length is 2.9 inches long, and I've created a plug that is approximately a, an inch and an eighth, and that's going to give us the correct tenon length for this bed, headboard. And that just, you put that inside the tool. So I already have the plug inside this two inch cutter. Just a quick reminder to everybody that's jumping on, make sure that you comment below with your name or just a comment. So that way you can be entered into the drawing for the CSBK1 after the video. And here I'm just adjusting the, the drill on our safety sled to make sure that I can cut this tenon as centered as possible. With rustic furniture, you'll find that not very many logs are perfectly straight, so it just it, it comes down to, to spinning the log in the best position you can and making sure the drill is in line so that you're getting an even cut. Through the lock secure just one last time. Wait for the drill to come to a stop. Remove it, and that plug made it so our tenon should be one and three quarters. That's pretty close. So that should be good. Now we're just gonna spin the log around and cut the other end. Yeah, keep with the comments of where you guys are located. We always like to see where our customers or potential customers are, whether you're in the US or outside. Um, just go ahead and comment with your location so that we can see where you're watching from. See here it's just the same the same problem of just finding a good position to see here I'm resting right on this knot so let's go out in front just to dash. For everybody jumping on, just make sure that you're commenting so that you can be entered into the drawing for the CSBK1. Um, like I just said, we'd love to hear where you're from or any questions that you might have, we'd be happy to answer. Always make sure that you're flush against the log. Never start it away from the log or you could, you could cause damage to your tool or drill. Let's check their length again. And we're about an inch and three quarters. This log is done. What type of wood are we using today, Logan? We're using a um, 
believe it's a red pine. Um, and this we, we got from a supplier out of uh, Aberdeen, uh, North Dakota. We do have a question here from one of our customers. He says, if you don't have a plug, do you just go back and forth and measure, or is that bad for the blade? Um, yeah, the, the best, um, yeah, you, you, could, you could start your cut, and you could continue cutting, and then you could back off and check your length. There's also a method in our booklet for a calculated length. And that, to get a calculated length, that you'll make a mark on the log where you need to stop your cut, and you'll have to check. But to calculate that length, you're going to need to know which size tenon you're cutting, the log diameter, and then the desired length. And then there's a formula that you plug all three of those data points into, and then that'll give you approximately the mark that you have to stop at. But personally, I just like the plug because you can stick it in the tool, and it, it stops exactly where you need it to stop at. You can just use a scrap piece of wood too to create that plug. It's a good practice to practice like cutting your tenons and then you can just cut that part off. Yeah, exactly. That's how we, um, we did that. As, as we were just adjusting the blades and getting that set, we just we cut off one of the tenons at the length that we needed for the plug and you, you stick that right in the tool. Anybody has any questions? Any more questions along the way? Go ahead and comment below, and we'd be happy to answer them for you. And also commenting below um, lets us know you're watching, so that we can draw names at the end for the giveaway. Are you using a one and a half? Uh, yep. So now we we just used our two inch cutter to make make the the logs A for this twin bed and now the for logs D we're going to use an inch and a half cutter because that's what it calls out for here one and a half inch so just remove the drill we're gonna quickly change out tools here and we'll cut tenons with our inch and a half cutter so the CSBK one is going to include that inch and a half and then a Forstner bit and that plan booklet that we're using today, which has 20 of our most popular blueprint plans. So the headboard and footboard wouldn't be included in that. Adirondack chairs, arbors, lots of those popular ones. And this commercial series features that 60 degree tapered shoulder. So if you can see right here, kind of looks like the tip of a pencil. And um, that is more popular for traditional rustic furniture. So that's what you'll see on most things that you would see at like a log furniture home store or something like that. Yep, exactly. And now too, you'll also see the difference when I cut this smaller tenon, I'm gonna be holding the, the drill freehand instead of in our safety sled. And you'll just, you'll, you'll see once I finish the cut that the, the safety sled makes it easier because it, it holds the drill from shifting left to right on you and up and down. All you have to do is push forward. So as I cut this freehand, it's going to be more difficult because you're also, while you're pushing forward, you're also trying to control the drill left, right, up and down so that your tenon's centered. So and the safety sled's very, very beneficial. Yep, and one of the customers just asked, actually asked if we sell the guide for the drill and yes we do and that's what Logan called is the safety sled and it's this part right here yep. so that slides yeah. in and out of this that attaches to the log lock yep. to hold it and it fits with both sizes of log locks and I'm also going to make sure to put my plug inside the tool before we cut here so that way we get the same tenon length required in the plans. And so with this freehand you have to make sure that you're lined up because right now the way it's resting on my hip I'm pointed down I'm going to cut off center. 
So make sure to view from the side that you're as in line with the log as possible and also looking down towards the end of the log to see this, just to make sure you're in line. So now we're, we're set, we're up against the log, let's cut. <laughs> So you, you noticed the, the drill, it just, it, it rocked around more just because it's not locked in place. And the tenon, it's still a good tenon, but you just, you'll, you'll get sections of tear possibly sometimes just because that drill is moving while you're cutting. So the, the safety sled will, will produce better tenons for you. One thing too though that customers have questions about sometimes is if the tenon itself is rough. And that's actually not a bad thing because it helps hold the glue better for your joints. So if you have the tenon itself that it is a little bit rougher, then that's not necessarily an issue for building the furniture. Right. Because yep, if, you, if you think about it, these grooves that you find in the tenon the glue's going to go into those grooves and you're just you're creating more glue surface area and it's just it's going to be a stronger joint overall now we'll cut our last tenon make sure we're lined up properly <laughs> any questions feel free to leave a comment below and Logan and I will be happy to answer them for you yep so now we're going to just gonna pick up here for a minute and we're gonna drill the last two mortise holes required in our, our post log and then we'll assemble this For all the new people watching, please comment below with where you're from. It gets you entered into the drawing for the CSBK1. And then also it just lets us know um, where you're from and where you're watching from. So these are our log locks too. We have two different sizes. We have the original and then we have the XL. And these are some of our most popular accessories. Yep, the, the original ranges in log sizes that it can hold from one and a half inches to a four and a half inch. And the XL ranges from a two and a half inch minimum to an eight inch maximum. And some, sorry, somebody has a question of what glue do we like to use? I, I prefer just a, a traditional, as long as you're indoor, just a regular, uh, like a premium tight bond glue. If you're outdoor, um, is there, just make sure you have a waterproof glue. And you're also going to want to, um, for outdoor furniture pieces, just to have a sprue going through the bottom of the tenon kind of hidden just to make sure that you're not getting any separation just due to the elements outside. I'm just gonna double check my measurements again before I drill the mortise holes. And I also, change out this. Jennifer, could you grab that two inch selfie bit, please? Mm -hmm.
one of our customers said that they have a log bed in the bedroom set. They're remodeling a room for their little boy, and he's not even here yet. <laughs> We've had customers build cribs, swings, uh, changing tables. It's honestly amazing to see the different things that people come up with. They're super creative. We had a tiki hut that somebody did. Like, if you have uh, photos of your projects, definitely email them in to us or post them on Facebook because we love to see them. Yeah, just it really, it, it helps us. We're, it makes us glad to, to know that we're providing tools that people can use to, to make gifts for friends and family, or maybe they're even starting a business and, and providing for their family with the tools that we've sold them. One of the customers wants to know what polyurethane we use. Um. I think that that kind of depends on if you want to add any color to your wood. Because if you use a clear poly, then that will maintain more of the, like the original color of the logs. Um, otherwise, I know like lacquer. Yeah, lacquer. lacquer is very popular. We've um, I prefer just a traditional min wax, and I usually like a satin finish. That's just a personal preference, honestly. Though there's if a lot of people like gloss. Um, we can also reply in this video as well, just with. The customer asked about glue. We can recommend some glue, some some poly finishes, and other types of finish. At the, um, we'll leave a link in the video at the end. Yep. Or you can certainly email us anytime or call us. Um, we have people here that will answer the phone for you. You won't be getting an automated system, so everybody knows a lot about the tools and the furniture to help you out. Um, Bruce asked what size tenon cutter we were using. In the beginning we were using the two inch commercial series and then the last one that we used was the one and a half. Yep. Um, and another customer asked, is there a guide for tenon size for the application? Like is two inch a minimum size for the bottom bed rails for softwood or does one and a half inch work? Uh, one and a half inches would be structural too. If, uh, I guess it would depend on the bed size. If you're looking at a queen or a king, you'd probably want to upgrade to a two inch, but for a twin to full, I, uh, an inch and a half tenon is, is very strong. Otherwise also our um, plan booklet tells you which tenon cutter to use. Same principle, we're just gonna make sure that we're is lined up to this log as we possibly can so we can get a straight hole. I'm gonna look down. Um, one of the customers wants to know what size drill we use. We recommend a half inch single speed drill. Um, you can see more information on our website for that, but it's really important to be using the right drill for these. Yep. Yeah, this, um, there, there, there's only one cordless drill that we know of that will run a tenon cutter, and I can show that at the end here. But this is a cheaper drill. It's a, it's a very durable drill. It'll last you a long time. There's, um, there's a lot of good reviews on it, and we've, we've used it since the company started. Um, another customer says, what's the easiest way to find and drill the angle, say 7 to 10 degrees for the mortise hole in a rounded wood bench? The, well, the, the easiest way would be with our drill sergeant, but that is um, by far not the cheapest way. So the, the simple method is to, um, would be to, to kind of build your own guide. I'll, I'll try to describe this as best I can verbally, but it would require you to take a piece of, of stock wood, say a, a two by six or two by eight, and you're gonna you're gonna cut that wood at the angle you desire. So you'd have the square end of it at a 90 degree, and then you would cut a 17 degree, um, 
uh, taper on the, the one side. And then in that, you would, you would have to drill a hole through your block then to create kind of your own guide. But um, the drill sergeant is a, is a great fixture that, that's also accessible with our log locks. Another customer says if you have a drill press, the holes are a breeze. Yep, yep, drill presses are great as well. Just as long as you can get a, a good clamp set up on top to secure your log. That's, um, oh. yep, sorry, go ahead. Uh, we're, we're done with all our tenons and mortise now, so I'm gonna just begin assembly and just kind of show you um, the, the tricks to assembling. One thing too, for those of you who aren't already in our VIP group, that's a great group to join because it's kind of like a forum where you can ask questions from other people that have built things. A lot of people interact in there and can answer a lot of questions who build rustic furniture on a regular basis. Yeah, and this is something if, um, <clears throat> if, if this is well reviewed enough, we'd, we'd like to do this um, perhaps maybe once a month or bi-weekly. Um, we'll make kind of whatever project you people are interested in. Um, or if there are products that you want um, to see, like the drill sergeant that Logan was talking about, we can definitely go over those things. So leave anything in the comments that you'd like to see for future videos, just so we get an idea of what you guys are looking for. And to, to install these tenons, I like to use a rubber mallet. You can use a wooden mallet. You could use a traditional hammer. Just make sure you've got like a wooden block or something so you don't actually damage the wood. But most of this, you should be able to free spin into the tenon holes. It is important to make sure that you are assembling right after you cut the tenons, especially if you have green wood. Yep, because the, the wood will dry and begin to, to warp on you. And this wood is already very dry, if, if you aren't able to tell. Here's where it can get tricky. Well, you'll just you'll have to find, and and you may we might have to end up switching some of these around, but to find a good natural position, so that these will all slide into place now. doing at this point is we're just dry fitting it um, just to make sure that everything fits and then if it fits we'll mark it so that way when we sand it we put it back together the exact the same way If you're just jumping on, make sure you comment below before the video is over to let us know that you're watching live, let us know where you're from, and then after the video we'll be um, drawing for a free giveaway of the commercial series beginner's kit.
looks like everything fit together fairly well. Um, we're by no means experts in, in uh, rustic furniture making, um, but we're definitely experienced enough to, to assemble some stuff. Yeah, definitely. And like I said, if you haven't already, join the VIP group because if you do build rustic furniture on a regular basis, you can give a lot of tips to people that have questions mm -hmm. or vice versa. If you have questions, there's a lot of people that have a lot of knowledge in there that do this on a regular basis that can give you more insight into that part of it. Yep, so now we've dry fitted this. We know that it fits together. We wanna make sure we get this back together the same way. So what you would do is that I, I like to, instead of marking on like the shoulder here, you could do that, but then when you go to sand, if you don't remember, you're gonna sand your mark right off. So what I like to do, is I'll mark the ends of my tenons. So let's just, let's just call this one a one, and this one will mark as a number two. Um, somebody asked again what type of wood this is. Red pine. It's red pine. Yep. And then is glue necessary? Yes. Yep. Unless uh, you wanted to screw it, but um, for most traditional rustic furniture makers, you'd want to just use glue. Um, somebody asked too, is there an advantage to sanding after dry fitting as opposed to having it all sanded before you start cutting tenons? I, I guess the, the benefit would be is um, while you're while you're cutting your tenons and drilling your mortise, there's chances if it was already sanded that you could you could cause some dings and nicks and have to resand it anyways after you've assembled it. So I I like to dry fit it all, mark my logs, and then I'll sand it, assemble, and then you can um, make sure to glue while you're assembling and then finish it. And Slade, we will make sure to. I include a link after this to the VIP group for people who are interested in that. Otherwise, you should be able to find it on our page under the groups tab. Mm -hmm. So now as you can see, just a, for example, I've marked this top log as a one, this bottom one is a two, and I've done the, the same thing in these mortise holes then. I've given this mortise hole a one and the bottom one a two, so when I go to reassemble, it all goes back the same. The next thing I want to cover, this isn't related to our tenon cutters, but a new product we've, we've kind of had out in the market is just um, like a, a, a way to add some more character to your pieces and make them unique is our burn stencils. And um, if you wanted to, instead of having these spindles in your headboard, you could router a channel in both of these top and bottom logs and you could fit a piece of wood in there for a headboard and you could burn on a name, designs, whatever you want to make. But for this one, we've just we've sanded the tops of our post logs and we're just gonna burn onto the top of these posts just to show you how our stencils work. Um, one customer is asking, is it harder drilling hardwood like oak with the tenon cutter? Uh, yes, it, it will be harder and you'll definitely want to make sure you have the right drill because um, with pine, sometimes you can sneak away with an underpowered drill, but uh, if you're cutting oak with the tenon cutter, you need the right drill. Comment below if you guys have used our burn stencils. I'd be interested to see. Yeah. Um, so this is basically what they look like. These are the minis. Whoops, sorry. Yep. Um, and then what Logan has is a small butane torch. You just need a small one. Actually, it's preferred to have a small one. Otherwise, it can kind of flare out. Yep. Um, but those are really reasonable. You can get them almost anywhere um, for like 12 bucks. Yeah, but now we're just center the way we want and then just hold the flame. You'll kind of see just it takes a little practice to get the right height and depth. But once you've practiced, you'll get the feel for it. And it's really, I, I like to go left to right or top to bottom. And certain woods will burn at different rates. 
so that also takes practice just learning how to burn on different wood so now we can see the final piece just and we do bit. typically recommend to take it off with like a needle nose pliers <laughs> yeah logan's done a, a bunch of these so we kind of know but you definitely don't want to be burning yourself yeah uh, that was bad practice on that part <sighs> Center of that. And the other thing you'll see on this, I, I prefer to burn on face grain. Right now we're burning on end grain. And you'll often see that it, it can get segmented just because the growth rings can vary so much and it it'll still burn a good image but I prefer burning on the, the side of the grain or the face screen and there's a paw so we have a lot of different stencils um, there do we make our own stencils yes yep it's our design um, there's a just a local manufacturer not too far away from us that that we have as our supplier of these stencils and they're made out of 304 stainless steel and we have a lot of different designs are um honestly <laughs> our most popular ones are probably like the bear paw we have a moose side profile um yep. so we have the bigger sizes the traditional is usually the standard and it's a six by six size otherwise the minis are three and a half by three and a half yeah so we, we just used the mini and here's here's our mini compared to the standard size somebody asked if they're CNC cut nope they, they these are uh, uh, laser cut um, but yeah at this point you you would Disassemble your, your dry fit piece. You would mark each tenon and mortise hole as you're disassembling to make sure that you have everything in the same position. And then from there, you would sand it. You would reassemble and then uh, make sure to glue. And then you, you could either spray a lacquer, brush on a poly. It's, it's all personal preference on that point. Um, is, is there any questions um, we can answer for anybody? Or is there any product? people would like to see we still have uh, a good amount of time yeah before we go definitely comment below if you have any questions um, Logan is definitely an expert with our tools so we'd be happy to answer any questions for you yeah and otherwise uh, you can always email us call us or um, message us do we still have the military templates yes Oh, the yep. military stencils we do yep we still got uh, Army Navy Air Force Marines we, we have um, quite a few left in stock, actually. Yep. What was the bear paw thing? That is a burn stencil, Chris. Um, if you, we'll post this video after so you can go back and watch. Do we sell the plates? The burn stencils? I'm assuming that's what you're talking about. Yes, yep. we do. Individually or in kits. And uh, one last thing just to point out. When you're gluing your piece, sometimes people want to know just how to clamp it and keep it secure. And traditionally, especially with, with headboards and, and larger pieces that you're assembling, we like to use ratchet straps. And it's pretty simple. You should be able to do it by yourself. If not, you can have find hopefully a, a wife or a friend to help you. that you just you want to go around the whole piece and make sure you're in the same direction and then you just you would ratchet until it gets you'll I like to go by sound so give it a few ratchets and then it should you should get a, a rubber band sound out of that but that's what you would do. You'd use a ratchet strap to hold it to make sure it doesn't shift or move on you while it's drying. And um, that's our, our method for securing it for gluing.
All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining. Um, we hope to do, like Logan said, more of these. So if you're interested, comment with other things you'd like to see. Um, and he, somebody said, how in the headboard, what do you use to support for the box? Box? Um, <clears throat> you could either, um, uh, steel, steel frames can be purchased at um, local stores and that's in the in the plan booklet here, it, it'll mark out in later stages um, the hole locations that you need to make in the bottom of the headboard and if you made a footboard to secure that metal frame onto. Um, if you wanted to also make, you could you could make a, the whole frame out of logs itself and have um, log supports for the box. But um, the, the quickest way is to go by just a steel frame. And another customer asked how we debark it. Uh, draw knives. Uh, I think we have one. These, I believe, we bought pre debark which you can do from certain suppliers. But otherwise, you can use our draw knife. And we can do a different video on that again sometime to kind of go into a little bit more detail. Yeah, but um, this has some writing on it. Ignore that. But this is just our standard draw knife. You can also call it a draw shave, but that would you just you would lock a log in a log lock, some sort of clamping device, and it's just um, we can do later videos on it. But it's just it's as simple as just peeling the bark off of the tree. All right. Thanks everybody for watching. For anybody's. Uh, questions that we didn't get to, we will go back through and we'll comment below with links or any other information. Otherwise, like I said, you can call us or email us. We'd be happy to answer that yep. um, with anything else. Thank you. Yep, thanks, everyone.